Okie doke, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at the table. Sorry I had to raise my voice a little bit. Here in Ohio, it's decided to become monsoon season. So, I had to raise my voice up from the previous clip. Sorry about that. But, I'm going to try to, hopefully you guys can hear me real well, I'm going to try to explain what we're doing today on the STEM work. Today, we are going to be focusing on doing these branches and welding this all up. I've already went through the whole process of forging the stem and leaves in another video when I made how to make a steel rose. I'll put some links in the description down below, and I'll also put up the end cards, those end screens you see where you can look at other videos. They'll have these videos in there. So today what I'm going to cover is our attachment point of where the bloom is going to go and how we're going to make that. Not as straightforward as you might think. And then the second thing I'm going to be covering is also how branches should look. It is my advice to you if you're doing anything organic in nature, any organic ironwork, to not strive too hard to make things straight and dress right dress. It does not look good to be so. My OCD drives me crazy when I see crooked stuff, but that's just the nature of organic blacksmithing. That doesn't mean you get away with just doing cruddy ironwork. You want your ironwork, each piece that you've forged, to be at the highest obtainable quality it can. And then when you assemble the pieces, you assemble them in a randomness that helps the aesthetic. So with that, the point that I'm going to point out on the stem work here, or doing these branches, I don't like seeing my branches come in direct 90 degree angles from one another. They don't look good and it doesn't look natural. What I try to strive for is offsetting of those branches and them not to come just straight out to look like it grew out of the ground. Next set of branches you put on are the actual branching, but they don't intersect at the same juncture either. I find this looks more aesthetically pleasing, like so. It looks a lot more natural. You say, well, Roy, that's all well and fine, but aren't they awful flat and just facing one direction? And you would be absolutely correct. We need them in this direction just to weld them up. We're going to weld up the front side, then it'll get flipped, and we will also weld up the back side. And then at our later stages, when we are ready to do our final forming of this rose, we'll just simply heat this area up and tweak the petals and stems and twist them and get them shaping and looking more natural all on their own. But this way they're already welded to the stem and they're all locked into place and everything's good. And as long as you don't get too crazy with it, the weld shouldn't pull apart. With all that being said, you may be asking yourself, well, how are we going to attach the bloom? I'll get to that in the second part of this. I'm going to do a real quick time lapse where I go ahead and weld these things up and get them all welded up. And then I'll be right back with you and we will go over how we're going to attach the bloom. Okie doke ladies and gents, there we go, we got this all welded up. So I didn't take the cleaning up of this too far. And I didn't want to take it too far because I wanted to show you guys some stuff about this. About the transition work here. As you can see, I want this to look as natural as possible, so I didn't try to make perfectly straight beads. In fact, that's exactly the opposite that you want to take and do. You want to run, fill in some extra beads, and then sand them down and make them look like one unit. 
you want to give some different thicknesses. You don't want it to all be the same thickness because roses and stems and things of that nature don't have all the same thickness of vine no matter where you go. So that's something to keep in mind. Two, we want to take and clean this up enough that we can match the surface texture here with the rest of the forged character here. So you don't want to go immaculately clean with these branches. You do want to take it up. I'll take it up further than this, but you know I'll take it up a lot cleaner than what you see here. I still got a lot of work in between all the joints, and I'll go over the vise and show you how I clean up most of that. But you want to leave it semi-rough because you've got texture here that's rough. You don't want this to be glass smooth. So that's something to keep in mind. When we go to the finish work of this, we will take and improve the finish of this piece a great deal just by reheating this entire thing and bringing it all up to one color, all one scale level, rescale all the areas that we have took in and ground on and things like that and all this grind work and stuff will go away and it'll look like the piece was all one piece. And that's what we're going for. So the next step, I'll be over at the vise, and I'm going to show you some tricks to get into all these little nooks and crannies with just some simple hand tooling methods. I showed this in my other video on stem work, but I figure I'll just re-input it here, real, you know, just for a real quick explanation before we go on to the next part. And the next part is going to be to take and make our attachment system for the copper rose bloom itself. So I'll be over at the vise here in just a sec and we will go ahead and clean this up. Okay everyone here we are at the vise. So at the vise here I had to do a little bit more cleanup with the grinder, with the angle grinder, get a few things cleaned up and stuff. If you don't have an angle grinder you can do all that work with filing. I have done that in my past but since I have an angle grinder now and some tools to help me along with this process, and this is a customer's order, so I have to get it out the door, I try to make things as simple as possible. So the trick I'm about to show you, I showed in my other video of making a rose, but it's essentially just a bit of P240 or 240 grit sandpaper. I take a length about 6, 14 inches long or so, rip it off just to roll of sandpaper, real thin weight sandpaper for the backing and then I take and I tear lengthwise a strip off of that piece and what this does is this gives me the flexible the most flexible file in the entire world to get into all the little areas and clean it up and you just simply have to watch your knuckles but you can get in here and clean up some of your grinder marks just by a little bit of hand work and it's these little touches that make your ironwork go the extra mile. So I'm not going to show you this whole process and all that business. You guys can assume how the rest of this goes. I just wanted to show you that this is the way that I clean up in between joints and get into the little nooks and the crannies of the branches like so. And it does make a difference. It does make a difference to smooth that up and just not leave it rough. So that's what I do for cleaning up between the branch areas. I went in real depth in that in the other video. So like I said, I won't go over that today, but you guys can go take a look at that if you want to. So the next step, we'll be over at the bench again, and I'll show you all what we're going to do for the attachment method on the bloom. Okay, everyone, here we are back at the workbench. So... What, how are we going to attach all this copper to the stem? Well, we're, it's very simple. We are going to take and bend this, give ourselves a conveniency bend, and then we are going to drill and tap the end of this rod. I will use a bolt to take and attach all these to this stem. Now you may say, well, hey, that ain't much blacksmithing. I say, hey, do what works. Do what will make your job easier and make it efficient and still come out with the same aesthetic outcome. 
Nine times out of 10, doing it this method is more stable than doing a tenon on the end of here, and I'll explain why. When you start tenoning this piece, the steel, since it's being a harder material, pressing against the sidewalls of the copper, which is a softer material, the copper moves out of the steel's way, and therefore the riveted joint never gets tight. So after all your riveting and all your hard work of making a perfect tenon on here and taking your time and peening it over just right, what happens? You've got a bloom that just wobbles and goes loose like that, and it's on your finished piece. And now you're like, okay, I've got to cut this off and try to draw another tenon, which is a real pain in the butt. This is the simplest method I have found. Let me know in the comment section what you think of it uh, or if you think you can do better. Chances are, if you're one of those type of people, you've already left that type of comment, but doesn't really matter. Point is, for the guys that are paying attention and find value in this video, we're going to do it this way with our bolt. We're going to drill and tap this, and I'll go over briefly doing that, and then I'll go to some time lapses of me doing all that work, because it's just slow and boring. So, without further ado, I'll go ahead and put a conveniency bend on this, and then I'll talk for a second after I get it drilled and, and tapped. Okay, everyone, as you can see, Roy is probably a really unhappy fella right now, but for everyone who's watching me, this is a great point to be 100% transparent. When I selected the rod to forge this stem out of, I did not pay attention where I was grabbing it out of my steel rack. This happens to be high carbon steel. Yep, and you can guess what happened by those two pieces laying over there. Very, 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 very frustrating. So, we will have to press on, as that's the only thing you can do at some points. But, this is a really great point like I pointed out, to be transparent with you guys. Because you may encounter some of these same difficulties as you're going along, and you're going to think to yourself, oh man, I've got all this work into it, I did all this branching, this, that, what have you. And you're going to just, well, for quite frankly, you're going to be really unhappy about this, uh, just like I am now, as this definitely puts me behind. But the teaching point here is, is that we can still proceed further with this project, even though that is not going to work out. So you say, well, how, how are you going to do that, Roy? Well, there's always mild steel rod out there, and I've always got a welder. Go figure. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a way of fixing it. We work with steel. There's always usually a way of fixing it. Unless you don't have a welder or if you don't have a way that you can fix these things back. I feel for you knife guys out there that make knives because, yeah, at this point you're totally hosed uh, on making knives. As where with ornamental work, we can kind of fake it till we make it. But my hopes and dreams got crushed. And the reason why they got crushed, well, you know, I was starting to tap that hole. Things were moving along seemingly, kind of at first. But then, because the hole drilled just fine, everything was nice and soft, went through just fine. And, yeah, the tap wasn't wanting to cut. And it was just getting stuck, and it kept getting stuck in the hole. And I'm like, man, what's the deal? And I kept putting some oil on it and things, and it ended up snapping off the tap inside the hole. What I've done before in that instance is I've heated stuff up before 
to what would be kind of the critical temperature just above and then cooled it slightly and that's usually enough to break the tap up or fracture the tap and then you can just tap on the outside edge of this and the little pieces will just fall right out well as I was attempting to do that the whole thing fractured and broke apart if this was mild steel this would have never been the case this wouldn't have been a problem but clearly this is not mild steel so we press on so the next step in this process now that I've got this little bit of a derailment I will go ahead and weld on a new piece and I will drill and tap the hole I'm not gonna make you guys watch that and frankly I'm a little disgusted right now so I'm gonna uh, call it quits on the filming of this portion but we'll pick this whole little subject up again in part three of this series and I hope you guys will enjoy watching that and we'll you know we'll go at it again so hopefully you guys have learned something from my failure today but tomorrow's a new day and it has enough troubles of its own God bless you all thank you for watching and stay tuned for part three.